Good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Bradley. I'm an associate professor here in agriculture and or what's going to be agriculture and tourism. Uh, it's the combination of agriculture and then uh, Parks, Re Recreation, and Hospitality Administration. Uh, we're merging as of uh, July 1. We'll be official. Uh, a great big family. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about uh, measuring outcomes related to service learning projects. I mentioned in the chat, um, at any point uh, you want me to email you these slides, I'm happy to share them uh, or happy to also, uh, somebody's peeking at my door, uh, happy also to discuss more about service learning and the assessments thereof um, and expand on anything I put in here and also share the, the survey tool that I'll be using or I'll kind of highlight a little bit. Uh, and let's go. So uh, first, a uh, quick overview of what service learning is. Uh, so you can look through different literature and you find a lot of different answers. Service learning could be a dimension of community engagement. Uh, civic engagement is another term that's commonly used. Uh, some people will talk about it as far as experiential learning. Um, we're we're going to kind of narrow that down even a little bit more. And we're going to say it's a course-based educational experience or a project that benefits the students and the community. So there's uh, benefits to a community or an organization and the students as far as the learning atmospheres goes. Um, so what we want to look at for as far as service learning is a couple different things. We want to look at how it, uh, you know, in the grand picture, how it relates to student retention. That's both in the classroom and year after year or year over year. We want to look at graduation rate. So how does uh, service learning uh, help a student graduate on time um, as, you know, as far as a, a Decent matriculation rate, maybe that's four or five years or whatever it may be. And also look at, uh, you know, course progression as well. Uh, academic performance. So, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, how do they perform uh, in the classroom uh, or on projects, on assignments or on assessments? And then look at the what I call the KSAEs. Um, so you heard, probably heard of KSAs, knowledge, skills, abilities. And uh, we, we like to throw in their experience, experiences as well. Okay, so uh, these are the check points I use. Um, this is not specifically a timeline. Sometimes they line up really well. Sometimes they don't. First, we want to identify a project. So, you know, you, whether you're working with a community partner or uh, organizations al already, um, or you go out there and you seek that out, uh, we're going to be looking for a community partner. So we're looking for projects that, that meet some kind of need, right? Um, what is the need present? Is it specifically rated, related to... Um, something you can put within a course or not. And then as you think about that, you need to, you know, say we have a project, we completed one here for downtown Russellville. They have some empty lots and they were looking for some uh, tourism recreation type uh, development to go in these empty lots. So um, we identified the need, there's some empty lots uh, downtown. And then what kind of courses can uh, align with that need? Sometimes the courses align very well, sometimes they simply do not. Um, so when we when we look at ident identifying a course, one thing we want to make sure is not only is the content or the topic uh, align, but also the the things as far as um, uh, timing. You know, we've uh, there was a master planning uh, project that came across my desk not too long ago, and they wanted to have it done in June and July, um, and that's just it's not possible with our uh, current setup, right? We need uh, a typical fall or spring semester, and then we also want to make sure that how they how the partner or the organization projects that uh, project or uh, need as far as, you know, how the, how they want it to happen. So you want to, you know, have some satisfaction on their side, how that's going to progress the student's learning and development within the class. So you've got a couple of things there to kind of uh, play out at the very beginning. Then we talk about the planning. So, you know, uh, you know, what, you know, we're talking about the actual, actual after you've actually selected the project and after you've uh, said you know this is not not just the project but the course it's going to be in is thinking about the planning with how it progresses through the course do you need to front load material and then have the students come in midway to work on the project or is the project going to be more of what I call the shotgun approach where we go out and we get our hands dirty our feet wet and then kind of uh, grow and progress after we've already been immersed in the project a little bit um, and then sometimes you have the projects that are a little, little bit more back end loaded where you've kind of done all the coursework and now we're going to focus real intent, intensely on a project or whatnot. So it just kind of, it all, it all depends on what's going on with the, with the project. And then you also need to th think about uh, resources. You know, do we have the right funding 
and the right time allocated to complete the project. Sometimes there's just not enough funding or resources, and that includes time as well, to complete the project. And finally, we're thinking, thinking about identifying and assessing outcomes. What, you know, beyond completion of the project, what other outcomes uh, am I looking for with my students, with my course, um, and then with uh, the relationship we have with the town and gown and whatnot? So basically, what we thought about, you know, we have all these great ideas, right? We think service learning is great. It has uh, some, some great outcomes related to retention, graduation rate, academic performance, that, so on and so forth. But there are a lot of work. Um, and, and, you know, not to be too cynical about it, but is it worth it? So what we want to do is we wanted to know what the outcome. So we've got these, you know, we've got these course evaluations and students at the end of the semester say, you know, I like the course instructor. I like, I like the content. The instructor was prepared. You know, some, some really good information, um, but not the, anything related to the service learning component and their professional growth and personal growth related to those experiences that you've provided. So we kind of looked at a few different areas. We want to look at how much time was invested in a project in class and outside of the class. And so the, you know, something we looked at is the instructor tracked how much effort and time it took to prep uh, and plan the project. And then how much time is the student involved in the project in class and then external to class. So in class, we may go over what master planning is. And then outside of class, they're spending a couple hours uh, during one week going out and surveying and uh, as far as site surveying or uh, doing, uh, you know, visitor or intercept surveys of people. Uh, we want to look at what type of projects. So everywhere from like environmental restoration to uh, site planning uh, to just information gathering. What are the, what's the gamut we're looking at there? And everyone's, every project's a little different. And then we want to look at personal and professional growth. So how are the students uh, growing as far as the, in a way that may help them? We're talking about like time management, um, working with team teammates and that kind of stuff. And then personal growth, we're talking about like considering factors, you know, so stuff that kind of relates to the previous presentation, right, is um, being considerate of others, uh, being open to differences of opinion, stuff like that. Uh, we also wanted to know how the instructor was assessing within the course. So we're talking about formative and summative assessments uh, throughout the service learning project. You know, uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. Like, are they journaling throughout the project? Are they doing uh, reviews of certain things? And at the end, how are they how are they assessed as far as their performance in the service learning project? We want to talk about we want to know about the student perception of the experience. Did they enjoy the service learning experience? That kind of stuff. And then some general demographics. So this is the nuts and bolts. And as I go through this, if you have any questions, feel free to, I've got the chat box up. You can uh, ask any questions uh, you may have. Um, so the first part we want to do is project type. And this is not like all encompassing, but this is generally the, the major uh, themes as far as project types we have with service learning. So we got, you know, are they tutoring or mentoring? So, you know, uh, whether it be in an educational setting, like a formal uh, K through 12 or, uh, you know, in more of a, a non-formal education, such as like a Boys and Girls Club or whatnot, um, you know, helping helping others learn, uh, you know, typicals, you know, math, reading, science, stuff like that. Uh, consultation. So this is more of like information gathering or expertise sharing. Uh, we don't see that as much at the undergraduate level. Uh, environmental restoration or rehabilitation. We have quite a bit of that in, in our field, and I'm sure there's other ones as well. Uh, you know, think about like, you know, fish and wildlife, geography, geography, stuff like that is, uh, and one of our pictures earlier showed um, us doing oyster uh, habitat uh, rehabilitation and restoration work uh, out in the Outer Banks in North Carolina. So how you know how are we doing that, um, or when what we're going that way? And then because after we talked about the tutoring and uh, mentoring, we had a, a secondary thing come in, say educational programs and teaching specifically for K through 12. So we added that uh, research and report on the topic of interest. So this is again information gathering to present information to a group or organization or external audience. Um, and that happens quite a bit uh, throughout all of service learning is this, you know, gathering of information and sharing it. Uh, then we look at building construction. Um, you know, this is falling a little bit more into the, the volunteerism kind of thing as well. But if we can add some educational components, we do that. Uh, in my previous institution, we worked a lot with Habitat for Humanity to do a variety of different things. Um, but we also, you know, made that an educational process as well for them. 
uh, po po political or policy change. And I, I, you know, I, I try not to dive into politics too much. Um, what we're trying to really think about here is policy change as it relates to the topic that they're studying in class. So if we're talking about uh, natural resources, <coughs> excuse me, if we're talking about natural resources, we're just thinking about how are we preserving or advocating for the preservation, conservation, uh, stewardship of natural resources. So it's not so much a, a thing of choosing a political uh, leaning or whatnot. And in a social justice project or campaign as well, um, you know, we see that a lot, the sociology uh, groups and stuff like that. And then the other, because there's always something that, uh, you know, may not fit really well, or while we think it may fit well within one of these, the, the project lead may not feel, feel fits really great in that. So we kind of leave that up to them. Again, this is just to see what kind of projects we have out there for service learning. So the next kind of set of stuff we have the students looking at a, answering this basically on a Likert scale, right? We use a one to five scale, but you could use uh, another one if you, if you wished. And they just responded to some different stuff. So the students get this at the conclusion of the service learning engagement or the service learning project. So, you know, think about like, help me define my personal strengths and weaknesses. You know, how did this project or did this, it'll say this pro, the, the service learning experience helped me define my personal strengths and weaknesses. And they have to answer it from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And then there's a neutral, right? Uh, and so we have a, a variety of different things. We developed this list from a variety of different service learning uh, research studies, um, working mainly with uh, University of Georgia has a, a Center for Service Learning and Community Engagement, and I may have the names uh, slightly off, and then uh, Ui Pui, uh, and then I think it's the University of Portland as well. Um, and I have a whole uh, set of uh, previous lit if you're interested in getting some more of that. <coughs> Sorry, allergies got me going. So really what we wanted to know is, you know, when we look at this in general, is, is there personal and professional growth and development? And, uh, you know, some of these things, you know, can be viewed as a little vague, um, but, you know, we, we felt like they really covered um, what we were hoping to get out of it uh, as a total. And then I kind of fit them all in there. So look at it, like manage my time efficiently, planning a project, working as a team member. Uh, and then we also had, you know, what kind of ass assessments were utilized within the course. So we had a variety of things there. And again, that's not all encompassing. Um, and uh, I don't I don't know if I just didn't have, if I didn't paste it correctly or whatnot, but there's usually an other below that uh, activity log. But, you know, what's common is we, we see common as journaling or reflective writing uh, discussions. Um, whether it's oral or poster presentations, we see that kind of, you know, often. Um, as you get down to like a student portfolio or activity log, some of those are less common, but um, none of these seem out of the ordinary, right? Something that I didn't see, we don't see a lot with the service learning is like an exam or a quiz related to that experience. Um, so some of the students may have quizzes or readings or readings associated with quizzes uh, to kind of front load topics or front load information. Um, but as we get on into the formative and summative assessments for the, the project itself, we kind of see that kind of uh, wane a little bit. <clears throat> and finally, we have the evaluation of service learning, and this is actually where things get kind of interesting. Is you know we want we want them to tell us what they thought about it. So like uh, the work I did in this course benefited some segment of the community. So thinking about like making them think about that um, in general uh, is a good exercise for them, and it also allows us to see how they evaluate that service learning project or uh, engagement overall. Um, this is for me personally, like, you know, the other information is great. For me, this is the, the, the really the, the cream of the crop, so to speak. Um, when we go through there and see some of these results, it's kind of interesting. So I want to go back a little bit and talk about these is, you know, the, the big stars of the show really are, when, when we talk about impacting others. So when we made, you know, made me aware of my own biases and prejudices, we see a very high, uh, you know, mark on that. Made me more aware of my impact on others. Provided opportunities I learned in class to help people in the community. Um, you know, th these are, these, you know, when they get an average uh, or a mean score of four out of five across the board, you know, you're really, you're making the, you know, you're really making an impact on these students and how they view 
themselves as a student, as a, an engaged uh, part of the academic community, as an engaged uh, member of the uh, you know, general community, as a civic, civically minded person. I'm back and forth here a little bit. <clears throat> I apologize for my coughing. Um, what I use is I go back to this one quite a bit, and we look at you know what which one of these am I really hitting well on, and how can I uh, improve my service learning project um, to uh, affect the other one. So, um, you know, one thing that was kind of lower previously is I would have learned more if I spent more time in the classroom than doing service work. Um, and I was like, man, that's a bummer to see that one not score really well or, you know, sc score high, you know, because, that, you know, if, if you score high on that one, we're, we're, we're kind of bummed out. You know, you do all this work. Um, but overall, um, most of them work pretty well. What we found out is, you know, it's, it really depends on the amount of work you do. I, in, in each of you uh, may have different experiences. Sometimes these service learning projects are... Uh, what I what I like to say is quick and easy. Uh, you've got a good community liaison, uh, a good external partner, and everything just kind of fires, right, right? It does really well. And sometimes you're more of the person that's kind of pulling the person along, or or kind of give them a gentle push to kind of get things moving. And it kind it's it's just a little bit more work and effort. And uh, so it really depends, right? Um, what we noticed is, you know, during the COVID, you know, the COVID time frame so much, and you know. We're kind of emerging from that, I would say, as far as service learning goes. But, you know, we, we, we diminish our amount of service learning. And what I've seen is I'm not as happy as an instructor when I don't have my students out and about and doing things. And I've noticed that it's, it's a little bit harder to, to and maybe that's a reflection of you know, my, per, my stance as well. It's like it's a little bit hard to get those students more engaged in that versus when I took the, so this semester we took the students out to several different events, had them out in the community several different times. And it's a little bit easier to pull that kind of stuff out of them, right, um, and, and get them engaged. And then we come back into the classroom, um, whether we do reflections on what we experienced or whether we're talking about a different topic, um, there's some things naturally happening as well. So there's, a, there's benefits beyond what we assess in this as well. So overall, um, I'm happy to share the entire uh, survey with anybody that wants uh, to take a look at it. Um, I have it on Question Pro. I've, I can, I've got a Word document as well of it, um, and I'm happy to share it or you know help modify it. So if you want to look at how service learning can benefit you know your students and and what you do, um, you know and report that. You know that's another part is that you know we we all do these you know portfolios that ask questions about our teaching modalities and our pedagogies and whatever it may be. Um, you know and this is just additional information that you can have at, you know at your disposal to talk about, you know, your, how you engage the students in these different courses and what that means, right? Every, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people can take students outside of the classroom, you know, and we do a lot of work with that. But what does that mean? What are the outcomes? What are the benefits? And we, here we can have some um, data. Um, so what I do is I, I give the, give the survey at the conclusion of every service learning project I do. Um, and I get a variety of information. The courses, you know, the, the information changes from course to course. You know, students, you know, do better in uh, courses that are what I call the more fun activities. Um, and then some of the, you know, like research methods. We're doing a survey methodology service learning project. And, you know, they, they like it, but they don't like it as much as when we went out to the, the fish hatchery, right? Um, beyond that, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to share uh, whatever I have. I find it's worth quite a bit. Uh, to, you know, it, there's a lot of mileage to it. Um, <clears throat> and I'll take any questions. Uh, I thought uh, uh, Bethany would like this final picture here. Um, I'll take any questions. You're, feel free to w reach out to me um, for more uh, information. Um, so Susan West, how do, how do you get these funded? Any advice? Um, I'm pretty, uh, Susan, I'm pretty honest with my external partners is, you know, there's some things I can pretty much do for free. Uh, and, and and I do that. We, you know, we, we have the students go out and do, um, you know, surveys. And because we do a lot of survey methodology, you know, we go out and do surveys in the community. Uh, we'll go out and do like the one we did master planning downtown. We walk around downtown and had the students come up with ideas for development. Doesn't cost us a nickel, right? 
on the other hand, if it is, there is a cost or whatever is I, I just, you know, be, I'm straight up with them is like, what I like to say is, you know, this is the resources we need to complete this. Um, a lot of times I found that um, they are very aware whether they like it or not, they're aware that there are some costs associated with it. Um, it goes, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say my rate of uh, success as far as getting that funding, but I, there's plenty of times I tell people, sorry. Um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm against passing that, uh, the buck on uh, to my department or students, unless there's a, an incredible reason why, you know, if, if I'm helping a, uh, you know, at my previous institution, I turned the uh, the uh, Boys and Girls Clubs down for several projects um, just because, you know, I didn't feel like it was worth it. It was going to be an incredible cost, and uh, they weren't willing to really support that. Um, and then, you know, the timing just didn't line up as well. So I think that answers your question. I, I'm, I'm honest. I am honest with people about funding, about the resources it's going to take. Um, I want them to have the full transparent picture. Uh, of what's going on. Uh, the, the, the biggest hurdle, honestly, is not so much funding. It's it's timing. Uh, everybody wants these these projects completed uh, within two months. Um, you know, they've got a two-month window and they need it now. And I'm like, well, that's just not the world I live in. Or they approach me in January and say, I need it by March. Um, well, I, I could get it done in two months, but there, there's no planning time. Uh, Kathleen says, Kathleen, yes. So anybody and everybody, um, Check, uh, email me, mbradley19 at atu.edu. I'm, I'm happy to share the survey I have. I'm happy to share um, this presentation. And uh, there's actually, um, I'll have to go out and find it. There's actually a journal article published from some of the information we collected uh, a few years ago. That's all I have. Uh, if you have any other questions, I'll stick around. If not, uh, enjoy your next presentation. I was told to make it short, sweet, and to the point, and I hope I did that. Uh, if you're like Kathleen and I, you're going to go uh, celebrate Cinco de Mayo, right, Kathleen? Susan Otto uh, is is the person under the mask there, uh, the mask singer, if you will, is uh, Bethany, I think, if I remember right. Thank you, everybody.